Welcome back to MK Sports Cars. Shh. You hear that? Now that must be the K20 VTEC. On this week's segment of Keeping Up With The Car Hackians, we've got SAS. The Marines are in. It's the premium marine polish with added PTEF. And we show you the latest updates in the workshop. Don't go anywhere, guys. You don't want to miss it. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Rolling, rolling. excited about this. Well, this is the big one. This is the one you've all been waiting for. This is the RX5 K20. This has been well documented in our build process where we've built this car. It's the first one we've built using the Honda Civic Type R from an EP3 engine and it is super duper comfy. I'm going to start on the inside and we're sitting in a very luxurious looking and feeling cockpit. So some of the highlights of the cockpit then, we've got padded seats, new diamond, diamond stitch padded seats. We've got the padded centre tunnel top which is rather nice on my leg. I've got a suede steering wheel with indicators on the, on the uh, steering wheel. I've got a carbon dashboard, our brandy clocks. It's really nice. Oh, and the best part, the best part of this car for me, is the windscreen and doors package. This is a rather nice little touring car, I have to say, to start off with. It just feels so compliant. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It's a six speed Mazda MX5 Mark II gearbox. Mated to that 230 horsepower Honda Civic Type R engine. That gearbox feels so smooth that is just like butter. It is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. I could smash a lot of miles in this car. This is super comfortable, super comfy. I'm barely getting a blown about. I'm a little bit higher up with these seats, a little bit taller. But I don't know, there's something about them that just makes you feel, just feels really nice. such a lovely little roar to it. Oh, wow. I think I want one of these. I'm sold. Seems like the VTEC comes in about 4,500 RPM. Even not on the VTEC, my goodness, it's quick. Oh, that is nice. That is really, really nice. This is everything that you could want in a car one of these cars. This is touring, this is power, this is looks, this is the business. One of the features 
features that we've got in this particular car is this eight channel steering wheel system that we've just developed. So with your indicators left and right, and hopefully you can see that on the camera, you've got indicators left and right, we've got main beam, horn, headlights, side lights, wipers, wash, we've got everything on your fingertips. You don't even have to move, it's so lazy, I love it. But it goes like a blooming rocket. It really does go like a rocket. That, that caught me off guard, I have to say, and I, I didn't even wind it up. Now I knew this car was gonna be good, but I didn't realise it was going to be quite that good. Stop this car, we've got the wheelwood calipers on the front, which is the kit that we do to take the Mazda upright and, and use the big brakes. So we've got four pot calipers on the front, we've got uh, standard calipers on the rear with double one, double four pads, just to make it stop that a little bit better. 15 inch, 15 inch wheels uh, with the Toyo T1, T1R tires. Gives it that little bit of uh, road compliance in the damp, but obviously still quite sticky, so they're absolutely fine for, the, uh, for everyday use. It's designed really as a road car, this car, more than a, a, a track day monster, but in the corners, not wanting to go too mad with it, obviously. Let the VTAC in. Oh, here it comes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Oh, I like that a lot. to build one as a demo car, most definitely, loving that a lot. Right guys, welcome back to the MK Sports Cars Workshop. Well, we're going to talk about the cars in a minute, but for those of you who turned up with the Stony Kit Car Show and see us, we had a great show, nice to see some familiar faces, so thanks for turning up, and if you missed us at the show, guess what, it's even better you can come down here and see us and look at the cars anyway. So, but what we're going to do now, get into the cars. Right over here at Hashtag Brian's Car, guys are working on this, so things that are get bolted on basically. Nose cones now be fitted. This is the new SX nose cone, which is the flat sided one that fits further back. It's got a different shape to it, different under tray section to it as well. Um, we will be fitting the um, honeycomb grill in there as well, but this bit's completely different on the nose cone. Um, it will be coming out with some other bits as well, which goes with now the SX bonnet, which is down here. This has all been trimmed and fitted and we'll put that on so you know and you can see and the scoop that we do on these now the reason we did this scoop is to fit the booster air filter throttle bodies right underneath here so we don't have to cut any holes in the top here anymore makes it much cleaner and also induction noise especially for track days we know that's a killer so yeah that's all fitted nice so it's just a bit of bonnet catches to do on there we'll whip that off quickly put that back over here Right, so into uh, engine bay area. So pair valve blanks have been fitted on this, throttle bodies temporarily fitted, still on with wiring. ECU is here, but we've had that out because we've flashed the ECU. So it's got a map on it now, and we get rid of some of the issues, that, that side stand switches, tilt switches, and all the little things really that helps, and we do some of the bits on the rest of it on the wiring. Oh, all tanks in, that's in, and also down in there, which you won't see, there's a little, um, well, we can either use it for the drain plug, but we actually put a little adapter in there. We put the oil temperature sender for the DD2 dash, or we use the ED, ETB DG dash. Um, that goes down in the bottom tank, so it gives us a good temperature reading of what's going on with the oil. Flat shifter bits are all bolted in. Um, still on the front here, where Anna is filming. LED headlights, remember this is a track only car at the moment, it's not going to be rolling, it's a sprint car. Um, that's on and move that out of the way so you can see. And these are the LED with the halos in them, all in one unit. Uh, 
Remember, they are not IVA compatible, guys, sorry. They do comply with MOT, but don't comply with IVA for some reason, but there you go. Uh, front wing stays bent and bonded and painted, ready for the wings to go on, and then we can start bolting the wheels on, finish that final fitment as well. So right, on to middle section of the car here, dashboard, trial fitted in, steering column through the hole, all the fixings done for that, centre tunnel in, as you know, the uh, uh, push to eject button, or line lock as we call it, <laughs> would be great, wouldn't it, a James Bond one. Uh, seats are all fitted in now, final fitment done on those, interior panel kit all fitted in, done as well. And then on this side, uh, we finally fitted done the final fit with the exhaust bracket, and the two and a half inch exhaust system, that's a stainless steel system right the way through from front to back. It's a six inch can, generally pretty good actually, they're on noise and those, we use a decent acoustic field based material inside of those. And we've got to move on to the back. So now on the rear of the car, a couple of things that we're doing, anti-roll bar has gone in, uh, we've just got the final drop links to do on those. We've got all of diff as you saw and everything else, but the main thing that's on, the two GRP extra wide arches uh, are on there. They're 50mm wider than the stock ones. This is an RR chassis, so it's a wider wheelbase. Fuel cap's in, anodized black fuel cap, and the hose link pipe's all in. ETB senders in here for the um, for the digi dash, so you can see all the fuel level, tank's all final fitted in as well. Um, so look, looking rather sharp. And this little bracket here, you're gonna say, well, what's that for? Well, what it is for is for this. So this fire extinguisher system, this is a compliant FIA compliant now. So rulings changed in January. So if you're unsure about the rulings, you can go online and look at this, but the zero 2020, this complies with uh, current regulations as well. That's gonna be sitting in here and then uh, clamped into place, just like so. And then we run the pipe work front to back and into the areas of the cockpit, engine bay, etc., which comply with the, the regs that this car is gonna be working with. Right, here we are at hashtag Ted's car. So a few bits going on, on this week as well. So radiator has gone on, 19 row all coil has gone on. This is with our bracket that we made. It's just a bent up for very simple design. Um, you can make them fit the 25 row, but you have to elongate one of the holes here to make that fit. But they are designed specifically for 19 row all coilers. This is a 55 mil radiator with 25 mil outlets on it, top and bottom. Now, this is a dry sump setup. Um, basically top going to top here and bottom this one, which will come out the water pump, the electric water pumps in here. And a small little Bosch one here that will feed down to this particular outlet here. Now, if you was running a wet sump pan, we would then have this in the same position, but the bottom hose, because the engine coolant out is there, would be on the, as you sit from the driver's bottom left. It will be down on this section here. Um, just for uh, just for your information, really, I show that. But yeah, we have different setups for different things because otherwise, getting that all the way over here from that side of the engine to here using the same radiator was an unnecessary pipe work problems, etc. So yeah, that's all gone in now, so it's good. Wiring's gone through. Also, ECU's been done on this. We've had that all flashed. Rectifier's all been bolted in, which is down here by the oil tank because the oil tank's gone in and the oil lines have been made up with the anodized black fittings and the black hose, all of them oil lines right the way through to the oil cooler, which is these bad boys here, all fitted in as well. Wiring loom running front to back, loosely tied in at the moment because we've got some other cabling to run through it. And obviously this one's also gonna be having a fire extinguisher system, which will mount in the back here and we'll route that through the center tunnel at the same time. Fuel tank at the back here is in, and we've got the fuel sender exactly the same because it's having an ETB in here. Fuel sender all mounted in the top of the tank as well. So progress being made on this one. A lot goes on that you don't see, I suppose, the little bits, but they're the major features of this car so far. This week on Keeping Up With The Car Hackians, based on a referral from one of you guys out there, we're gonna be testing premium marine polish. I've just learned so much and I realize how crazy messed up the system is. One of you guys sent me some comments that said, this made my car pop. So let's give it a go. First things first, let's put the gloves on. Apply product evenly in overlapping circular motion with a clean cloth to a small area while wax is wet. Wax will quickly dry to a haze, wipe off the haze with a clean, dry towel or cloth. As per the instructions, I've got my cloth, let's put some wax on. Now, I did have this week, um, Dave and Dave came in to collect their kit. Turns out, one of the Daves is a Valitor. 
And he said to me, the problem that I've got with buffing off the Tech Wax 2.0, and if you saw our previous, um, um, if you saw our previous, if you saw our previous segment with Tech Wax 2.0, you'll notice that I had a real hard time of buffing that off. Turns out I've been putting far too much on. So every day's a school day. So I'm gonna use Dave's feedback and I'm gonna just put on a little tiny bit and make it spread. Which, that's not a little tiny bit. That's not a little. <laughs> Apparently, according to uh, these two guys that were in getting their kit this week, with the Tech Wax 2.0, and I know I'm jumping about here, but if you get this buffing cloth, you rotate this 360 degrees in the pot, apparently that is enough to do a complete saloon car. Now, I was putting on about three times that on, on the bonnet, so yeah, I've gone a little bit overboard. Anyway. Back to the marine polish. So after putting it on, I've got to wait now for about 10 minutes for it to, uh, to dry and haze according to the instructions. That's just about enough time for me to go and make and drink a cup of tea. My trusty assistant has just noticed while we're on our way to fetch our cup of tea that last week we did the front wheel arches. And what you can see is where we tipped the water on and left it, the one that we didn't put the wax on, can't remember what the product was, has got a lot of water droplets on it all the way over it. The one we did put the wax on has not. If you can remember which one we used, what product we used, <laughs> We've remembered it's myrrh. It's been about 10 minutes. I've made and I've drunk a cup of tea, so it's time to buff this off. Now, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, it's gonna come off quite easy. Uh, it's not dried very white, like, like it says it does. It hasn't dried super duper white, but let's give it a go, I'm excited. That comes off super easy when you don't load it right up like I normally do. Now the moment of truth. It's the water test time. That just falls off of there. Absolutely falls off of there. Well, I'm super impressed with this. It's really easy to polish off. Um, is that because I've put an appropriate amount on or, or like gone light on it? I don't know, but it's super easy to polish off. It makes the car pop. Well done, Mike. You put those comments in there. Um, it's a five star for me. Five stars. Right, chassis production time. Well, guess what? It's rolling forward and it's gonna be up there where's, where you are next in the queue, basically. One another one has landed here. We've had actually had a couple of go out over the last sort of week or so anyway, um, off to their owners. Some we've delivered, some have been collected. So Mazda base to bike, engine cars. This one's a round tube booster car. Gonna be going out to a lucky owner in kit form. It's not a build car. So this will be heading out in the next week or so as well. Right, moving on from the successful show at Stoney. Well, the next one lineup is in Newark. So looking forward to meeting you there. It's another two day event, a new one. Uh, it's on the calendar, ain't been on for a few years, so looking forward to that. But in between that, we've got some track days as well down at Landau, Brighton Park coming up in August as well. Looking forward to those. A bit more spirited, a bit more fun than standing around just looking at cars. Track days are always awesome. Don't forget, guys, if you're looking to get into a kit car, we do have already built cars for sale, and I'm sure Anna will post that up. A couple of links to the Cars for Sale page. There's a couple of RX-5s, an Arian, a Shaman, etc., that are currently available. And if not, you want a kit form, well, we've got some new brochures here which I'm sure Anna will post and we'll video those for you. Got, uh, RX5 and the R brochure, we will happily send them out in the post to you, give you an idea what the cars are about. Right, that's a wrap for this week, guys. Don't forget to press that like, share and subscribe button. We'd love you to see you each week. And if you like what we're doing down there, put something down in the comments, especially, I'll tell you what I've got to go and check out, is Neil's Polish. Give me a second. Right, Neil's asked me to check this out because he reckons this was five star, this premium marine polish. It's on here somewhere, so. Oh yeah. 
that's a like, share and subscribe if ever I've seen one.